So when we, when we started this event, the opportunity was really to look back uh, at where we've come as an organization, but also as a central city and a chance to really look forward to some projects. So today, it's really a chance to reflect for us on the last 20 years. In 1999, I was two years into this job, and the questions surrounding were, what are you going to do to save downtown? Will downtown ever be successful? We've tried, and nothing has happened. Well, fast forward, key questions uh, that we were being asked at that point were a challenge. You know, people said, who would take the risk to build new office space downtown? Who would preserve downtown's historic and iconic buildings? Who would reimagine the blighted and underutilized sites in the downtown core? Who would spend money? And key questions of who would really want to live downtown were being asked. It was also a question of what were we doing to access and better reconnect with our riverfront? We had not act activated the riverfront in some time, and it was an underutilized uh, opportunity. So in 20 years, when we look back at the development projects, a lot of you were in the room. This morning, I've already seen a lot of developers, a lot of property owners, a lot of brokers that truly believed in the opportunity and invested in downtown. You stuck with it, you took risks, we know it wasn't easy, and we know you had opportunities to do projects elsewhere, but there's somebody that I do want to acknowledge. So our outgoing board chair, David Taylor, for some reason could not be here with us today because Maui was much more exciting. And perhaps it was this almost full head of hair that he has in this picture that we're showing. But, but David, like, uh, like many of you, was part of a group of developers that took risks and wanted to commit to making downtown a much more prosperous location. In 1999, he was building the first private sector office building with Esquire Plaza. He formed the public-private partnership to do the Sheraton Grand Hotel at 13th and J Streets, which was critical for us in order to keep up with the convention industry. If we were gonna stay competitive, we needed to add hotel rooms, and it was also home to our first state of the downtown breakfast. So during the last 20 years, his projects like 621 Capitol Mall, the new city hall have absolutely changed downtown skyline. We joked in the office, he even brought mermaids to K Street. And you've seen it, admit it. David, like many of, the, many of you, took the risk. So join me in thanking, even though he's not here, David Taylor for his efforts. You know, our goal for downtown was to have this truly be a location that wasn't just a place people work. In 2017, we really say it's been 20 years in the making where we're at today. We've become an economic hub, an entertainment hub, a cultural hub. People look at downtown Sacramento much different than they've looked at in the past. At the core of this was the development of the Golden One Center. It was a game changer for us. I think we all knew that. But when we look at the development that's taken place there, it's been ranked in the top 15 venues in the US, the top 40 in the world, has hosted over 350 special events, including 42 concerts and over a million and a half users. It absolutely has changed the way people are spending downtown. We knew when the Golden One Center came, what, whatever the event was, people would come early, they would stay late, they would support local retail, they would stay in the hotels, and that's exactly what has taken place. This past year, we, had, uh, we welcomed back the NCAA March Madness Tournament in downtown Sacramento. The impacts were huge. We saw almost $6 million of regional spending come out of that tournament, and I think it highlighted the importance sports plays in this region. You know, it's not just the NCAA trials, it's not just uh, the basketball games. Anytime there's an event at the Golden One Center, we see foot traffic downtown, specifically at 7th and K Street, increase over 50%. Exactly what we had hoped to see. The Golden One Center is at the epicenter of a billion dollars of investment. In the last year alone, we've seen three dozen new development projects around it, that are going to additionally change the landscape. One of them, the Sacramento Valley Station, added 25,000 square feet of retail to it, which will soon be home to Video Lab West, a collaboration of McClatchy, Google, and YouTube, exactly the kind of entrepreneurial investment and spirit we want to see downtown. We also saw improvements in the transportation front. 
improve regional transit service, new bike share stations, and downtown property owners voted to support the downtown streetcar. In October, we celebrated downtown's first hotel opening. The Kempton Sawyer added 250 hotel rooms, new meeting office space, 45 condominiums, and unique retail. We know that this is going to be an opportunity, and even if you haven't been to the Kempton Sawyer, you've got to look at it. There's a pretty cool pool bar up there, too. It's probably cold now, but maybe. Uh, downtown property sales have also significantly increased. Over, since 2014, over a billion dollars in sales downtown. Last year alone, uh, in 2017, we saw $200 million in sales. And you can see a lot of those notable sales here. Uh, in front of you, you have a copy of our annual report. Please take it, it's got more information on there. Uh, some interesting facts for you. Downtown property taxes account for nearly half of the city's total, and the city's hotels account for 41% of the TOT for the downtown hotel projects. We knew Sacramento and downtown would be an economic engine. It provides opportunities for the city and we've got to continue to invest in downtown. In 2017, we saw 13 new employers come downtown, including the world headquarters for the SNW Seed Company in Old Sacramento. Downtown is home to 40% of the city's total workforce and office vacancy rates downtown are at an eight-year low of under 8%. Yeah. For the investors in the room, yeah. <laughs> you know, we talk a lot about investments and new projects that are added to the skyline, but why is downtown such an attractive place? I think Randy Dixon's with us here today, but Randy Dixon had a great quote that we like that commented on why they moved their office space downtown. We know employers see the value of being near unique amenities downtown. We know employees want to be part of an active, walkable urban district. And this is exactly what we had hoped to see. Creating a thriving urban destination also requires unique retail and unique urban experiences. Last year, we saw 25 new retail businesses open uh, in the core of our district and our downtown partnership staff worked to recruit 16 of them. Among them, and I think they're here with us today as well, our 2016 winner of our Calling All Dreamers competition, Oblivion Comics and Copy. And we also saw six new retail businesses from this competition open last year as well. You know, one of them I want to highlight, and I hope Ernesto Delgado's here, but Ernesto Delgado opened uh, Maya Well in Cesar, or La Cosecha, excuse me, in Cesar Chavez Plaza. Not traditionally the most desirable spot, you would say, to open a new business, but it has changed the culture, it has changed the environment and activity in that park. He's owed a real uh, sense of gratitude for that investment, and it will be a great addition to our concerts. You know, as we, as we look ahead, we want to make sure downtown is a walkable environment. We want people to feel good about a pedestrian experience. It's one of the reasons we created 20 years ago seasonal events to bring people downtown. From events like uh, our Theater of Lights in Old Sacramento to the downtown ice rink to farmers markets and concerts, these events change the patterns of people and expose them to the central city and they keep a talented young workforce activated in our core. Last year was a record-setting year for us. Almost a half a million people came down to our special events last year. You know, there were a few of us in the room here that were part of the first Friday night concert 20 years ago. There was literally three staff members snow fencing and about 100 people that would come to these events. Fast forward now, we've got 6,000 people a week that come to our downtown concert series. Set a record this year on Friday night concerts with 75,000 concert goers. So it proves if you do the right events and activities, people will come downtown, they will stay, and hopefully come back. We know with special events we've created uh, something special and we will keep that up. The rest of the country clearly is taking notice of what's taking place in Sacramento. Last year we saw in best of lists across the country, Sacramento mentioned about 35 times. From real estate hotspot to foodie haven, more recently game changer, Sacramento's saccolades as we've called them are clearly racking up. We know 
Millennials are choosing where they want to live first before where they want to work, and we want to keep young people here in Sacramento. You know, as a new wave of development uh, takes place, uh, our analytics and research department would tell you uh, keeping up with the development is a full-time job. Uh, you can see on the map here uh, above you projects that are proposed and planned, and again, it's in the materials you have in front of you. A couple we want to highlight that we think are important. The 700 block of K Street just started leasing 137 mixed income apartments, and soon more than a dozen local retailers will follow. The downtown commons will reopen their connection through to Old Sacramento and will add key retailers this next year. The Front Street in Barcadero will soon finish its project and renovation later this spring and improve accessibility to the full waterfront. The Marshall Hotel will become a Hyatt-centric, adding 170 new hotel rooms to 7th and L Streets. Memorial Auditorium, where we're in now, will begin renovations this spring. We'll need to find a new home next year, probably, for this event. The Community Center Theater will begin a transformation in 2019. An important one is the addition and expansion of the Sacramento Convention Center. If we are going to stay competitive in the convention industry, we have got to expand this facility and do it quickly. Beyond our district, key projects around the central city that are all making a huge difference. Housing in Midtown, mixed-use development on our street, the Bridge District in West Sacramento, and the development in the rail yards. You heard a little bit this morning on the Kaiser Medical Facility there but one that can't be undersold. We need MLS. The MLS stadium in the rail yards is important, but this community deserves MLS, and we should do everything we can to get MLS to come to Sacramento. We know, like 20 years ago, there's incredible opportunities that still remain. Soon, the Kings and Ali Yusefi will start on the transformation of 800 K Street, market rate and affordable housing units. This project, and I think the mayor will talk a little bit about it today, is important for a couple of reasons. It adds housing. We have talked a lot about the importance of housing in Sacramento, getting more people to live here. Last year, we only added 235 units, nowhere near keeping up with demand. If we are going to be an active urban center, evenings and weekends, more people need to call this home. For downtown to be successful, we've also got to make it easier for the development community to do projects. You saw on the map there are several projects underway, but we need thousands more to keep pace. In the next year, we're going to work with the city and our partners to do everything we can to look at the policies and procedures to make viable mixed-use housing easier to do. We cannot continue to have people go elsewhere to do projects. We must ask ourselves, how can we build partnerships? How do we remove the complications from keeping these projects going? You know, when you do hear projects move elsewhere because it's too complicated or challenging, we need to address it. We need these projects here. What other projects should we be envisioning for downtown Skyline? Can we build new office space to address shrinking vacancy? Can we create an active riverfront? Our rivers should be the front door of our city. We've got a tremendous asset in, in, on our waterfront from Old Sacramento all the way down both sides. We need to cultivate the riverfront to be an active gathering place for residents and visitors. Sacramento needs more places to come together and we need to develop the riverfront as dynamic as the city we are becoming. You'll I know our keynote speaker, uh, Mayor Tom Murphy from Pittsburgh, will talk uh, about the riverfront, but it's, it's a huge opportunity. You know, we also know managing the urban space uh, doesn't go without challenges. We know, for many of you in the room, for visitors, potential tenants, potential retailers, perception is everything. We agree with you. It's one of the things that we are focused on making downtown a clean and safe environment. Working with our downtown guides and maintenance services, we have teams on the streets seven days a week. But we know there are questions of, is it safe enough? Do people feel good about the experience? You know, we regularly work with our city, county service providers, 
I know he's here today, Norm Leong and his team with the Sacramento Police Department. We are focused on public safety. Since 2012, we have housed more than 400 people and we know the Housing First solution makes sense. I want to acknowledge and really thank a collaborative effort that took place amongst Mayor Daryl Steinberg, the Sacramento Council, City Council, and the County Board of Supervisors for their efforts to end homelessness. This is not easy. We know home per whole person care will make a lasting impact. We must make the issue of homelessness a priority focus on how the housing first solutions. We can do this, but this is a regional issue. And if we do it, we can help the most vulnerable in this community. So 20 years ago, it took the dreams of a lot of you in this room to transform downtown is to where it is today. When we look forward to this next year, key issues, the bid for MLS, the cultivation of farm to fork. Recently, the New York Times and even Hollywood have put us in the national spotlight. We must continue to focus on housing solutions for all incomes, developing our riverfront as a destination and ensuring we have an environment that is safe and clean for everyone. We feel very strongly every day is our chance to make this city a little better. On behalf of the Downtown Partnership Board of Directors, the staff, myself, we absolutely look forward to working with you in 2018 to build value. Thank you.